Following a six-year whirlwind romance between Vicky and Jimmy, Jerry Rawlings was born on the 22nd of June 1947 in Adabraka. As a child, he attended Mrs. Sam's school, where he developed a love for the arts, playing in Julius Caesar and other Shakespearean roles. He progressed to Hashimoto school, where he set eyes upon and became smitten with a certain Adjuman sister. After Hashimoto school, they went their separate ways. Nana Kunedo went to the University of Science and Technology. While pursuing her degree in interior design, she immersed herself in university life, making lots of friends and taking part in various activities. Jerry John, on the other hand, joined the armed forces to become an Air Force pilot. Flying was his passion, and therefore it came as no surprise when he'd won the Speedbird Trophy for outstanding performance in the flight school. The Speedbird Trophy went to Lieutenant J.J. Rawlings for being the best Air Force cadet of the flying training school. Having achieved his dream to become a pilot, he embarked on his mission to track Nana down to rekindle the flame with his childhood sweetheart. After a very long courtship, lasting almost a decade, they got married on 29th January 1977. Two years into their marriage, Flight Lieutenant Jerry John Rawlings, like many other Ghanaians, frustrated with their deteriorating economic and political conditions, led a mutiny against the military government at the time. Following an unsuccessful uprising, what should have been a closed military trial was open to the public in an attempt to make scapegoats of Rawlings and his men. For the first time in Ghana, a group of junior army officers had attempted to pull down a military regime made up of senior army officers. One could see that the abortive attempt had been brought about by extremely compelling factors. The trial of the coup plotters was very revealing. J.J. Rawlings, who boldly owned up as the one person centrally responsible for the attempt, gave cogent and infectiously popular reasons to explain why the attempted coup was justifiable. This titanic force, gigantic in all dimensions, broke loose on June 4th, 1979, with J.J. Rawlings coming out of condemned cells to lead yet another military regime. During the AFRC's short stay in office, they underwent a house cleaning exercise of weeding out corruption in the system. The AFRC did its best in the short space of time to throw a searching light into the dark recesses of corruption in the country. After three months, they handed over to a civilian government under Hila Liman.
the Armed Forces Revolutionary Council. During our short stay in power, have demonstrated openly what many people had only suspected before. Namely, that the holding of office in government in this country had in almost all cases been used to plunder the wealth of the nation. Gunnar is looking up to you. Thank you. The political and economic situation of Ghana did not improve, and by 31st December 1981, the Third Republic had been suspended to be replaced by the Provisional National Defence Council, led by Flight Lieutenant J.J. Rawlings. Rawlings had a natural touch, a man of the people. He connected with the masses and they loved him. His style of leadership gave power to the people, that they have a right to hold government accountable. As the people of Ghana struggled to stop the downward spiral, they joined hands with their brothers and sisters in countries like Nicaragua, Cuba, Suriname, and Burkina Faso in what came to be known as Solidarity in Struggle. As part of his visit, he received the Jose Martin Medal for World Peace on behalf of the Ghanaian people and also met with the Ghanaian students in Cuba. The chairman receives the Jose Marti Medal for World Peace from President Castro at a solemn but impressive ceremony. The award underscores Ghana's commitment to world peace and solidarity among nations, particularly those that remain oppressed and degraded by poverty exploitation and unprovoked aggression. Statesmen and world leaders, impressed by JJ's vision and his leadership style, paid visits to Ghana to show their support and forge closer ties with the country. 
Flight Lieutenant Jerry John Rawlings symbolized the new Africa rising out of post-independent neo-colonialism. The struggle for Africa's liberation that began with the Founding Fathers was not to be forgotten. The former President of the Republic of Tanzania, Julius Nyerere, was awarded Ghana's highest honor, Order of the Star of Ghana for his contribution to Pan-Africanism. JJ's popularity, like the wind, spread to neighboring African countries and on his arrival at the 11th summit of the Economic Community of West African States in Lome, Togo, the crowds of people lined the streets to catch a glimpse of the man who brought back hope to the Ghanaian people. <laughs> this summit, West African leaders continued with the objective for an economic community. Jerry John Rawlings was welcomed in Addis Ababa for the 25th anniversary of the then Organization of African Unity. modest role towards the inauguration of this organization 25 years ago. The passion of our visionary first president, Dr. Kwame Nkrumah, for continental unity is unforgettable. A united Africa provided for him the only assurance of real independence for us and sovereignty over our vast natural resources. For his vision and passion, he became a prime target for the enemies of Africa. With his view that the independence of Ghana is meaningless without the total liberation of Africa, Dr. Truman subordinated the independence of Ghana to the struggle for the liberation of the whole continent. He paid the price for his visionary zeal and boldness. 
But his speech on this very rostrum 25 years ago not only touched the hearts of Africa's youth, it still provides the agenda for our continent's liberation. Lovely to hear you. May God bless us all. Thank you. Back on the home front, the process of economic recovery continued and contact with the grassroots maintained. This kind of popular support kept a strong base for the continued governance of the PNDC. It is only by collective effort that the nation's problems can be solved. There are still some people who would like the nation to go back to childhood, but we are grown up, or should be. We're supposed to be old enough to realize that the nation is now paying the rest of the outstanding bill for those easier days when so many of our resources were squandered. This bridge, which we're commissioning this morning, is a long-term investment to benefit our generation and its successors. It is only one of many infrastructural projects that the PNDC is undertaking around the country to ensure that the economy does not falter again. This bridge belongs to Ghana, but it is more yours because it is Ajomoro. It is your property. Do not see it as government property. All of you assembled here are also the government because the PNDC is a government that is or should be run by the people. Electricity which was previously enjoyed by few, was now available to more citizens of the nation. So now that electricity has reached this community, it is important, it is used to generate funds for further development. This area, as you know yourselves, is rich in resources. It has extensive clay deposits and also deposits of oyster shells, both of which can form the basis for the manufacture of a variety of products, ceramics, building materials, lime, abrasives, etc. The existing Gary processing industry can be expanded and other agro-based industries can be developed.
Health was a central issue in structural adjustment. Inoculations of the six killer diseases were compulsory for every child, leading to the eradication of polio. The number of guinea worm cases fell drastically due to consistent education through the primary health care system. Bilharzia was another serious disease to be addressed. The dense vegetation growing in rivers served as breeding grounds for snails, which were the primary carriers during the cycle of the disease. Chairman Rawlings got personally involved in the removal of the weeds. Honor and integrity were returned to the Ghana Armed Forces and Police who undertook regular refresher courses in a sutrary training camp and other camps. The refresher courses were designed to maintain the alertness of the troops. The exemplary performance of the Ghanaian troops in peacekeeping missions won Ghana a Nobel Prize in 1988. Their dedication to their profession was vital in the fight against smuggling and illegal drug trade, diminishing the supply and trade of drugs in Africa. As part of the team building process, the PNDC was involved in various sporting events. any doubt that I was going to win. It's unfortunate that I, I felt at the finishing post, but I expected to win. Very fast race again. Um, I can see Arthur Austin running very hard. Behind him we have uh, Chairman Rawlings, but who is going to be first? Uh, Kofi Jin is also running very hard. A few of them uh, running like a neck. Uh, Arthur Austin is leaving them behind, and that's Arthur Austin breaking the tape, followed by Kofi Jin and Chairman Rawlings in that order. No, no, your bag when I say sports man. I have to give up smoking. You've taken smoking. I have to give up smoking. Let's just cut out on my stamina. And now we come to the ladies. 15 meters there. And there they come. 
can see this is a point back to my rallies. This is Hannah aiming all running very hard and that is an easy race, an easy race for uh, Mrs. Rawlings and she was followed by uh, Mrs. Anna Eni and third place went to Mrs. Queen and the spectators enjoying themselves. And that's over, we come to the finals of the football match matches and this is between uh, teams A and B made up of PNDC members and PNDC secretaries on next Now you can see the team A players playing from right to left. Team B playing from left to right. That's Chairman Rollins packing down everybody who comes his way. See somebody telling Jamal Rollins why he should pull up. It's nice to go, but he's supposed to be playing right in that position, but most of the time you see him at other places. Is he going to take the kick himself? Yes, Jamal Rollins. And he nearly kicked the turf instead of the ball. And now that's uh, Bamba Hoy, and uh, he has lost it. Gemma Rollins running for the ball, but he's been clear. The second part of the dancing, this time we'll be attempting to pick pegs, which have been fixed on the field. And uh, Gemma Rollins has collected his nicely. Now it and goes it down. She enjoyed themselves as they watch this dancing game at the Glasgow Stadium as part of the activities of marking the sixth anniversary of the game for Celebration. This is musical chairs, a game of musical chairs. A game with nine competitors on horseback fighting for eight chairs. And the idea is as soon as the music stops, there they go again. Nobody knows when the music will stop. And the music stops there. A scramble for a chair. Jeremy Rollins gets one. And then he is very lucky so far. Perhaps I shouldn't say that I like it. fighting hard for the chairs. Because we really have to fight in order to get there. <laughs> awesome. Horsemanship, scale, alertness. See who will get the last. There they go. These are still being provided. There they go around. And easy one <laughs> for Chairman Rollins again. And he has won the musical chess game. And then he gives a a hug to the And on June 4th every year, the flame was lit in memory of fallen heroes. In 1992, the country was open to multi-party elections and Jerry John Rawlings hit the campaign trail as the presidential candidate for the National Democratic Congress. The NDC has a vision of social development, economic justice, integrity and accountability. As he spoke on the podium... This country is not going back. She's moving all in forward. It was clear that JJ was still a man of the people. He continued to hold true to his beliefs that enabled him to rise up against the economic injustice of the 1970s. When we took over the reins of the economy, ladies and gentlemen, Abolso, places like that were dead. Uh, AGC was producing what? Half or one third the current volume. One third the current volume. We have triple, triple AGC's goals. When we started off, we started off with nothing but one thing, the truth and integrity. The truth and integrity. 
and this is what has brought this country out of the darkness. Now that we are beginning to see the light, with the responsibility and the duty of accomplishing what we set out to do, do we want to see the clock turn back? Do we want to see the clock turn back? Up to 58% of the population voted JJ for president. He was sworn in on the 7th of January 1993 to become the first president of the Fourth Republic. Aye. Flight Lieutenant Jerry John Rawlings. Flight Lieutenant Jerry John Rawlings. Having been elected. Having been elected. To the high office of president. To the high office of president. Of the Republic of Canada. The Republic of Canada. In 1996, President Rawlings and running mate Professor Atta Mills were on the road campaigning for re-election, which they won. This victory is not a victory to sleep, it's not a victory for laziness, but it's a victory to work even harder. <laughs> Democracy is to be able to have dialogue to be able to debate issues. Together with Cabinet, the President and Commander-in-Chief determined general policy of the government. He consulted with traditional leaders as well, which kept him in touch with the grassroots. During Jerry John Rawlings' tenure in office, a mausoleum was built in honor of the late Osagefo Kwame Nkrumah. Kwame Nkrumah was not perfect, and I may be one of the most critical people about certain aspects of his government. But I will never deny him nor any man the praise for outstanding achievements, and for Dr. Nkrumah in particular, the things that made him a great figure in history. On this 32nd anniversary of Ghana's Republic Day, we are laying Dr. Nkrumah's remains to rest at the site of his greatest triumph. After seven years of fighting in Liberia, Stability was returned after Ghana contributed troops to a multinational force created to end the conflict. Jerry John Rawlings played an integral role in the final peace process, which was brokered through the economic community of West African states. The instability of Liberia is affecting the stability of the sub-region. It's making it difficult to attract investment. It's making it difficult, you know, to improve the image of Africa. So I'm suffering, not indirectly, directly, you know, both through the contribution of my troops to bring about stability and through the fact that, look, it's, it's, it's creating a wrong perception of Africa. So we have a moral obligation to do what we can to, to bring about the necessary stability because we are all being judged, all of us, despite the efforts we're making, we're all being judged just by, you know, little things happening here. Frankly, I just don't think it's uh, fair and right that uh, Liberia, that used to be, you know, a former colony of uh, America, you know, should have uh, degenerated into a carnage of that kind, and yet no Western country lifted a hand to assist her. And yet she didn't actually need that much. But when it comes to the European th theater, the whole of Europe, NATO, the US, everybody pumps in all the necessary resources. And yet we didn't need a fraction of that to assist us in Africa to deal with our own problem. And it's not as if we were not making, you know, our own efforts as uh, members of the ECOWAS com community when we put together some troops to move into Liberia and to stop the carnage. We didn't have enough resources. All we could, and, 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 and uh, being members of the UN, quite honestly, 
I mean, there was no reason why they could not have assisted us in a very humble way. And had they done so, we could have brought this Liberian situation under control a much longer time ago. The hard work of the 1980s built a strong base for Rawlings to go to many countries to promote the good name of Ghana for viable foreign direct investment. It might be going too far to say that uh, we're hoping to become a trading powerhouse. We're only making our very humble effort. But the point is that uh, precisely because of uh, the political stability that we've enjoyed in this country. I mean, the world has virtually come to our assistance, you know, led by the IMF and the World Bank, as well as uh, some of the other Western communities, in order to help us lay the foundation for a developmental takeoff. We've used these resources to build roads, to extend electricity into as many regions as possible and very soon there will not be a single district in my country that will not have energy in other words there will not be a single place in that country that will not be you know potentially viable for industrial takeoff yeah. well, so that we virtually lay the foundation now for you know developmental takeoff you want businesses to come in that's one of the reasons you're going around the country precisely yeah. and that's part of the reason why we're here if i may use the word seductive we're, <laughs> <laughs> we're here to seduce as many american businessmen as possible to recognize that you know for all the efforts that we've made i think it's only obligatory on their part to uh, do what they can to invest in my country in the process he was given awards and the keys to various cities for putting ghana back on the map Ghanaians who left the country during the economic hardships of the 1970s and early 80s were coming back home to a country they felt proud of. Foreigners as well took advantage of the country's political and economic stability, which further stimulated economic growth. Ghana was once again recognized as the gateway to Africa. Among various world leaders, were President Bill Clinton and the Queen of England, who paid visits to President Rawlings to acknowledge Ghana's key role in Africa's development as a whole.